Hey guys, how are you doing? Today on the show is another beautiful recipe and I hope you guys have been enjoying all the recipes I've been bringing since. Okay, it's time for another very beautiful and perfect one. So time to call your friends, neighbors, brothers, sisters and your kids. This is why it's about to start. Welcome back! If you are just joining us, you've not missed anything. My name is Gina and today I'm making another very beautiful tomato paste recipe. Now, today we are making pumpkin egusi soup. Some of us add tomatoes to our egusi soup and you know, when you want to start cooking the egusi soup and you don't have tomatoes handy, if you have tomato paste, it will still do the job. And you know, the tomato paste makes the egusi very luscious. That's why you see the differences of people's egusi soup. It will be looking just like that, while some will be looking very sharp. The secret is tomatoes. So you can always get that sharpness with your tomato paste. So for the soup today, I'm going to be using meat. I'm using goat meat and shaki. I have pumpkin leaves, my egusi, also known as melon seeds. I've got seasoning, I've got fat prawns, popularly known as crayfish. I've got scotch bonnet, ataro dough, talk fish, just one I saw in my fridge. I'll just be adding it. I have one dry fish here as well. I'll be adding it. I have locust beans, iru to give it that, you know, native flavor. I have Cameroon pepper to add some hot, spicy sexiness, blended crayfish, of course, for the taste, salt, palm oil, and of course, tomato mix. Yeah, so it will help me put this together and give it, you know, the sharp look. All right, let's start now. I'll start with boiling the meat first. I'll be adding half a cup of chopped onions, salt, and two seasoning cubes. Allow it cook to bring out its water for a bit before I'll add water to it, that if need be. So I have about two cups of egusi melon seeds here, so I'm going to rinse it out, remove all the deaths from the market. So I'll add the pepper too. Pepper to your taste, don't forget. I'll be adding a bulb and half of onions. I added the half from the meat. And this is one medium bulb. So I'll blend now. So I'll add some water to blend it. I'm adding about one cup of water. And I'll blend. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to pick the leaves. Now, um, pumpkin leaves, to pick them is easy. Um, growing up, our job used to be pick the leaves, yeah? When we were young, like eight, nine, 10 years old. Various Nigerian leaves have different way of picking them, yeah. There are some that you have to, you know, remove them from their 
from the stem, like pulling it from the stem. Some you just pick maybe one one, but for pumpkin leaves, um, they always ask us to pick these three, three stems together. I don't know why they ask us to do that, but that's how I grew up. So this is what you get if you want to pick pumpkin leaves. This is how we do it. That's how they taught us to do it. So you always pick like that. And it's very important that when picking your leaves, watch out for um, worms, watch out for cobwebs, uh, because sometimes, uh, not really worms, like eggs from insects, like this one now. Okay, if you can see it closely, you can see the eggs laid by an insect. So that's why you have to usually wash them first. So when they are still big like this, you can see the insect, you can see whatever you want to remove properly, rather than when it's been sliced in the market. Yeah, so wash thoroughly. So like I told you, the three um, leaves or three, yeah, three stems or leaves together. That's how you pick pumpkin leaves. This has been washed thoroughly, so time to slice it now. Now some people like slicing very thinly, it's fine. Anyhow, it's fine. Just make sure you have your vegetables in your soup. The truth is when you get into the soup, it will definitely wilt and become very small. So for this soup, you can add as much pumpkin leaves as you want. It's pumpkin leaves, a goosey soup. So as much leaves as you want is good enough. Okay, so this is ready now. The next thing I'm going to do is to wash my dry fish, my stock fish, and the fat prawn, popularly known as crayfish. So I'm going to rinse them out now. And the meat is doing well, almost cooked. Okay, so the meat is ready. I'm just going to transfer it to this bowl. While I start cooking the egusi. To start cooking the egusi, I have about Two cooking spoons of palm oil here. I'm actually working with two cups of egusi today. I'll add some salt to the oil, just to season the oil. And the next thing that goes in is my locust beans. You can be generous with it. I'll just stir the locust beans in. If you prefer to add locust beans later on, it's still fine. Yeah, but for the aroma, for the taste, if you don't mind killing all the probiotics, you fry first. So I'll go get my egusi melon seeds. I have onions in here. I also have um, pepper in here. So I'll be adding tomato mix to add some lush look and taste to this egusi soup. So I'll allow all of them fry together. I'll cover it, come back, stay and make sure it fries very well before I start adding the other things.
Introducing the new Nivea Dry Impact and Dry Comfort Deodorant. Now with quick dry effect and longer lasting fragrance. Guaranteed to keep you feeling dry and fresh all day. Proven 48 hour protection and longer lasting fragrance from Nivea. Never get caught on fresh with the new Nivea Dry Fresh deodorants. Okay, wow, this is a very beautiful color. Like, this is so beautiful. Now we stir, stir. Cover again. Because it never stay dry. Drying out perfectly. So I'll give it some little time to cook again, and the color looks very, very beautiful. Very beautiful, and that's because of our tomato mix with vitamin A. D, E, and K. Yes. If you want to remember, I just say ADEC. <laughs> okay? Vitamin A, D, E, and K to fortify that tomato mix. This is so beautiful. So I'll give it a little more time to dry up again. And by the time I get back, I'll just add um, the dried fish, the meat, everything, seasoning, and coke. Okay. We are good now. Okay, this is good. I'm going to test this so that I will know the level of seasoning. Wow, tastes really good. Tastes really, really good. Yeah. So here goes a little bit of seasoning cubes because I have seasoning ready in the meat stock. Just a little bit of Cameroon pepper for that hot, spicy sexiness. <sighs> yeah, and my blended crayfish, you can be generous with blended crayfish. It makes your Nigerian soup super. I'm gonna stir. And the next is my stock fish which I soaked with the dry fish. I'm still going to put my dry fish hold, hoping it doesn't break for Baba Ibeji, yeah? So, my dried prawns is here. I'm going to stir again. And in goes my meat and meat stock. I'm going to cover it to cook for about five to seven minutes before I add the pumpkin leaves. Yeah, so I'm going to clear here and pumpkin leaves will be next. Okay, this looks super good, very, very good. So, oh my, I like that <laughs> that you hear from underneath the pot. This is good. Aha. So we can add our pumpkin leaves now. Like I told you earlier, you can be very generous with this pumpkin leaf because it's actually pumpkin leaf a goosey soup. So if you want to add more, it's fine. But over here, I have about three to four fistful for a little bit more. Now this is good, really good.
So I like cook for another three minutes to four and our egg soup will be ready. So what do we use to step down today? Say more, pounded yam, I can't pound, gari, yeah, this one is saying pounded yam. Let's just use semu today. Now it's time to make our semu. All you need to do is put some water in a pan, add your semu and begin to stir. Stay it until you get to the consistency that you are looking for. Okay, so our semo is ready. Time to serve this soup and enjoy it well. Yeah? Alright, got everybody. Put done done. Guys, see, I always tell you about how tasty my food is, but this egusi is on another level. This egusi is tasty. It's sweet. Like, you can't believe it. You have to try it. Add your tomato mix to your egusi while making it. It's beautiful. Tomato paste kind of elevates the color of the egusi and adds this very sweet tomato taste and that's what's happening here right now it's so tasty and of course i have to share so i cannot finish it and that babai baby is fish it's <laughs> all right guys see you again next week don't forget to replicate all the recipes, send me pictures, okay? You can send them to me on Instagram at Gina Foodies and Spice. You enter. You can also send them to me at Foodies Spice on Facebook. And if you miss anything that we've shown today, www.youtube.com slash Gina Ehikodi is where you can watch it, alright? Love you all so much. And have a blessed week. <laughs>